ever since Napster, the music industry has been trying to kill file sharing, right? You know, Napster was this huge global party of, you know, everybody suddenly had access to the largest music library in the world. And what did they do? Well, they went after Napster and they shut it down. Well, it completely backfired, you know? They shattered Napster into millions of little pieces spread across computers all around the globe. And now, if you want to shut it down, you have to track down every single one of them and turn it off. And they just can't do that, you know? They send out letters every month trying to shut down a couple here and there, but it just doesn't work. You know, there are just too many. It's, it's out of the bag now. Once it's that far distributed, it's really going to be hopeless, you know? They have various technical attacks of spoofing and, you know, legal attacks of threatening to sue people, but it's just too late. You know, file sharing isn't going to go away. The music industry, if they want to stop file sharing, there's no central computer for them to go to and shut it down. They have to go all the way to the ends of every wire. They have to snip all the cords across the globe if they want to try and stop it. You know, the network is built so that there's nobody in charge, that everybody has control over their own communications. So the fascinating thing about the internet is it's built around this thing called the end-to-end -end principle, which says that all the intelligence is at the ends of the network. You know, if I want to talk to Fred, you know, it's my computer and Fred's computer that's in charge. In between, they're just a bunch of wires. You know, at a very concrete level, I have a wire to my ISP who has a wire to a data center somewhere who has a wire to Fred's ISP who has a wire to Fred. There's no central computer in charge that you can go to and shut down and say, no file sharing. Either you have to go and find my computer and Fred's and take us out, or you have to snip all the wires across the globe. You know, there's nobody you can go to and say, shut down the file sharing. The internet's just not built that way. So the entertainment industry thinks they can solve this problem using something called DRM, which basically means locking up all their songs using encryption. But there is this fundamental mistake they've made, which is that like, if you lock up a song before you play it, you have to unlock it. And if I'm playing it on my computer, my computer has to unlock it. And since I own my computer, I've unlocked the song. Like, it's this very obvious mistake that they just can't seem to get through their heads. You know, if my computer is unlocking the song, I can tell it to make a copy when it's done unlocking it. You know, there's just no way around that. And so, if you see, every DRM system gets broken. You know, the Apple system has gotten broken. The DRM on DVDs has gotten broken. You know, no matter what you do, it's going to get broken. And it's also kind of idiotic because, like, even if the DRM systems weren't broken, there are lots of other ways to get movies, right? It's not just downloading it from the iTunes music store. You can go out to a theater and take a copy of the print. You know, you can have a video camera. You can have a screener that they send out to people. There are just tons of ways to get this stuff. You know, putting DRM on the handful that happen to go to consumers isn't going to change anything. Instead, what a lot of people have suggested is that DRM is a way of handcuffing users of saying, OK, we'll give you our stuff, but you can only watch it five times on four machines and only watch it when we say so. And we can deactivate it when we're done with it. You know, we have control over the way you experience our film. That makes a lot more sense. It's harder to prove, obviously, but you know, it certainly is much more compatible with the way they've been behaving. The network is a copy machine, right? Every single time you do something on your computer, it makes a copy. First, it copies it into your computer's memory, then it copies it to your computer's CPU, then it copies it out you know, to the network, and every step along the way from you to the person you're talking to, it makes another copy. The entire system works because it's digital and because copies are free. Everything works by making copies on a computer. You know, you're not going to stop that. It's the simple economics of supply and demand. You know, if you have one of something, then you can sell it to the highest bidder for the highest price. You know, whatever anybody in the world is willing to pay, you can sell it to them for that. If you have two, then you can only sell it for what the second highest bidder is willing to pay. If you have millions of them, then the only thing you're going to be able to charge for is the cost of making another copy, because otherwise someone's always going to be willing to sell it for cheaper. You know, on the internet, the cost of making one additional copy is free. You know, the so-called marginal cost is zero, so everything gets driven down to free. You're not going to be able to make money through the old models of selling individual copies anymore because there are just too many of them. You're going to have to go to other schemes. I mean, the entertainment industry is desperately trying to save their old business model, right? They're going around saying, how can we patch up and continue doing things the way we've done before? You know, that's just not going to work, right? They can continue trying these rearguard actions like DRM and like lawsuits, but eventually they're going to have to change their tune. So there are alternatives. There are sites like Rever.com, which are like YouTube, except every time an ad gets shown with your movie, you get some of the money from the ad. The problem is users just don't seem to care about it enough. You know, each individual movie only makes 30, 40 cents, right? And it's just not worth it to you 
to go and put it up on a smaller site like River when you can get the huge audience of YouTube and, you know, forget the 40 cents. But these little 40 cents add up, right? You know, with millions and millions of movies on YouTube, you know, suddenly we're talking about billions of dollars of revenue. And so you have this weird trade-off where each little bit's not worth it enough to the users, but on the whole, you know, companies are willing to pay a whole lot of money for it. There's no technical reason users can't do this for themselves, but there is an economic reason, which is that, you know, building the software takes money and programmers, and the venture capitalists are only going to pour money into the things that seem to have a high chance of return, which means the centralized sites that run ads and take the money for themselves. So yeah, sure, it's technically possible that we could develop this distributed system. And in fact, that's the way the internet was originally set up, right? People put their stuff on their own computers, and when they hooked them up to the internet, people visited their own machines, and they controlled their own data. And, you know, the fact is that could have worked. That's just as reasonable a way of doing it as anywhere else. The problem is, that's just not the, where the money is. And when software gets funded, it gets funded where the money is. I mean, there are two big problems. One is technical and one's political. The technical problem is that basically computers on people's machines at home don't have the power of servers. You know, they're not on all the time. People buy these cable modems that don't have high enough upload bandwidth to be popular. You know, cable companies have people sign user agreements that say they can't run servers from home. So if you want to do something like host a YouTube video, it's just kind of impractical to host it off of your computer, let alone your laptop, you know, which you pick up and take home with you. So it's really hard for normal people to run servers. So that's a technical problem. It means at some point you're going to have to upload your video to somebody's server somewhere else where it is run reliably. And that means inevitably giving up a measure of control. So that, the question then becomes, who do you give the control to? And users just don't care enough. You know, whether it's YouTube or whether it's Amazon or whether it's somebody who signed an agreement with them, they just don't care enough who they give it to, you know. The simplest thing is the best. Whatever gets their movie up, you know, that's all that matters to them. I mean, it sucks. Each time it sucks when somebody takes advantage of your stuff to make money for themselves. But, you know, each time it's not enough for you to do something about it, right? Each time it's okay, well, you know, they've got my videos, right? that sucks. Or they've got my photos, you know, that sucks. Or they have my email now, that sucks, right? But, like, they just don't put it together. You know, there's no tipping point where you say, okay, finally, I'm fed up and I'm not going to take it anymore. I'm taking back my computer. Like, it just doesn't happen, you know. It's like, you know, another one of life's myriad little pains.